Hi, my name is Jameson Blanford, Technical Marketing Engineer with Cisco Systems. Today we're going to be assessing the ability for a wireless LAN infrastructure to self-heal when an interference source is at range. So this is important because interference sources may be different distances between the client and the access point and they affect each one differently. In addition, what the client sees from the interference source and what the access point sees is fundamentally different because they're at different locations. So the self-healing capabilities of the access point have to take into account the impact of that interference on the client. So to start off, we're going to be assessing Cisco's Aeronet 3500 series with the Clean Air ASIC built into the access point. We have three different laptops at 30 feet, 50 feet, and 70 feet. And we're going to start off by turning on our interference source at 100 feet away from the access point. Karn, you ready? Three, two, one, go. Okay, our interference source has been plugged in. And as you can see on our Cisco Spectrum Expert display, Channel 1's duty cycle has been raised up. And actually, as you can see on the various laptops, the video source and the ping has been interrupted, signifying that the client connectivity has been disrupted. So now actively, the Cisco Clean Air Access Point is searching for the source of interference and actually searching for a better channel to change to such that it can self-heal away from the source of interference. And actually Cisco WCS has identified the source of interference on the map, providing the administrator of a location so they can go physically remove the device. All right, we're still on channel one. The system is still figuring out the source of interference, figuring out a better channel to change to. Okay, it looks like we're changing to channel 11 and the ping has been restored. So in a little over one minute, we actually have the ping restored and the video source is going to start to restore once VLC goes ahead and uh, re-requests for that video stream. So the video camera is still present on our WCS map so the administrator can go remove it. And now all the video sources have been resumed and entire network has been self-healed away from this source of interference at 100 feet. Now we're gonna assess the ability for Aruba's system to proactively self-heal against sources of interference at distance using their AP105 access point and ARM technology using their latest code version. So we're going to use the same set of three laptops at 30 feet, 50 feet, and 70 feet away, and then turn on our interference source at a 100 foot distance from the access point. Karin, you ready? Three, two, one, go. Okay, we have started our interference source on the channel that the access point was operating on. You can see the duty cycle has been raised up, and now the client connectivity has been disrupted on each one of the clients including the ping and the video source, indicating that the client connection has been cut. So now we're going to actually take a look at the console of the Aruba system and check out what the noise floor Aruba is actually seeing with this access point. So as we drill down into this, we'll actually see on channel 6, Aruba is measuring a noise floor of negative 90 dBm, which is far below their threshold of channel changing, which is at negative 75 dBm. So they need a signal strength stronger than negative 75 to indicate that they need a channel change. Let's go ahead and check that again. We're at 87 now, so clearly still above that threshold. We're also seeing some fluctuations in this noise level, even though the environment is remaining relatively static. The camera's not changing position, the AP is remaining in the same place, yet ARM is completely, completely raising or lowering the noise floor just depending on the inaccuracies of this Wi-Fi chip. So right now we see a noise floor of 103. Let's go up again, back down to 94. You can see going up and down, up and down. And this information is being fed into their algorithm but never giving them enough information to cause a channel change. So back down to 104, 101. So we'll wait the two, full two minutes We'll give Aruba the benefit of the doubt and see if they are able to make a channel change within their recommended window of 120 seconds. Still at 104. 
106. 106. 104, 105. Okay, we've waited the full two minute period and Aruba still seeing this at negative 105 dBm. Now let's go ahead and bring that video camera closer and let's check out how Aruba is able to deal with this when the video camera is at a 50 foot distance. So the AP continues to remain on channel 6, and as you can see, the noise floor is now dropped to negative 86. So clearly they're seeing the video camera a bit stronger, but not strong enough to trigger a channel change. Let's continue to check out that noise floor, negative 79. Negative 93. Negative 94. Negative 94. See, nothing is changing in the environment, but their Wi-Fi chip still repeatedly detecting inaccurate noise levels of this device. Back down to negative 76. So once in a while, they'll see it a bit accurately, and then it will jump back up to a negative 90 level. There it goes back to negative 94. So we'll wait at this current 50 foot position until the clock reads 4 minutes and 20 seconds. So we'll give them the full 2 minutes at this location to trigger a channel change if they're capable of it. Alright, right now we're approaching 4 minutes and 20 seconds. So Karin, could you please bring that video interference source to a 30 foot location? Let's see if they're able to self heal when the interference source is now 30 feet away from the access point. All right, Karen, let's go ahead and bring that source even closer to the access okay. point and bring it to a full 15 feet away from the access point. Let's see how Aruba will react to that source of interference. So now checking the noise floor on the access point. We see a negative 92. Let's wait for that to update. A negative 80. negative 64. So it looks like the Aruba system has detected that this is now b uh, below their threshold, so they will make a channel change as long as it remains below negative 75. Let's see if that remains. Negative 66. Negative 81. So still, the Wi-Fi chip is still, even this inaccurate, at a distance of 15 feet. It went from negative 64 all the way to negative 81. With no real change in the environment, now we're down to negative 71. Still negative 68. Okay, now it has yeah. changed. So, the Aruba system has now jumped to channel 1 to avoid the source of interference that is still present on channel 6. And now you can see it took them a full 12 minutes and 38 seconds in this real world scenario of an interference source being at various distances for them to finally detect the interference source and make a channel change to self heal and restore connectivity back to those client connections. As you can see, the ping has resumed. So what have we shown here today? We've shown that it's important for the wireless LAN infrastructure to take into account not only what it sees, but also the impact of interference on the client. Clearly the Aruba system was not able to self-heal when the device was further away from the access point. It actually had to be brought within a radius of 15 feet of the access point for it to detect it and eventually self-heal and move to a better channel. 